Miles Charles Monroe Jr. is the son of the late Dr. Miles and Ruth Ann Monroe, who both served faithfully side by side as international leaders of leaders. Miles Jr. is the younger of two siblings. Both he and his sister, Charissa Monroe, began traveling with their parents around the tender ages of 11 and 12 years old and visited over 30 countries. Chow went on through high school and then graduated, went on to college, graduated from ORU, which was his dad's alma mater. And after completing major scholastic milestones, Miles Jr. returned home to work alongside his father, Dr. Monroe, who understood and wrote his book, Passing It On, with his son, Miles Jr., in mind, as that is what he signed in the book, personally autographed to Miles Jr. He also stated the following publicly on the last birthday to Miles Jr., which was last year. He said, from a father to his son, my dear son, the day you were born was one of the greatest days of my life, and I decided to give you the most important and precious gift I could give, my name. I pledge to live a life that will make you proud to wear my name, and I pray you do the same to make me proud. I, give it to, I gave it to you. So I'd ask for you to please stand on your feet and welcome to the podium, our brother, Mr. Miles Charles Monroe, Jr. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I want to say what a privilege it is to be here. Uh, my first uh, trip here uh, to Bradenton was ironically last year. Uh, me and Pastor Phil were, were talking uh, in the back room earlier, and it's amazing how uh, God kind of works. He has this mysterious way of introducing you to the right people at the right time and bringing the right people in your life at the right time and you know who knew that you know tonight would be such a night where it would be me on this stage instead of my father you know um watching that video just now it it it, it makes it kind of makes me emotional uh because it reminds me of how much life my dad had inside of him and he walked into a room and he gave you life, you know. He, it, it, it didn't matter how, how, how much hours he was traveling on a flight, how much hours he was speaking at any event, you know, he gave time to everyone that wanted his time. And that's something that <clears throat> he has taught me and something that I hopefully am able to uh, carry on uh, at the Monroe name. Um, I want to thank Pastor Phil and your parents for having me. I want to thank Sam and, and she is Monique. <laughs> I, I promise you she is my sister. I, I've known her for years, but thanks Sam and Monique uh, and all the rest of the mentees. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, I, am, I am not a preacher, so I'm not gonna preach, okay? If you came to hear my, Dr. Miles Monroe tonight, Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, you won't be able to, but you will hear from uh, someone that has sat uh, at his feet for 30 years. And I've learned so much from him uh, by just by ob observing him and, and seeing how he interacts uh, in front of the crowd and behind the crowd, you know, and he was the exact same person uh, in both arenas. Um, Let's, let, let, let's pray. Father God, I, I pray that you use, use me. Use me to inspire and encourage at least one individual uh, that's going to hear me speak tonight. Uh, bless all the individuals here and all the, indiv all the individuals watching. I pray 2015 would be a year of new beginnings and a year of harvest. Uh, give us a, 
a clear mandate for this year. And I pray that your will be done in everything. In your name I pray. So tonight I just want to share real briefly. Um, I know a lot of folks uh, see my sister and I and are amazed that we are able to smile and be somewhat normal um, in public. And that's, an, uh, that's, a, that's a true product of what my parents were and what they taught us uh, as kids growing up. Um, you know, my dad and my mom uh, spent a lot of time uh, traveling, but they, they took the time to uh, teach my sister and I uh, principles, principles that they, they instilled in, uh, in individuals like yourselves each year. Uh, fortunately, we got to see it every day. Um, and it's something that I, I cherish now. I cherish more now than, than before because, you know, you never know um, what tomorrow holds. You know, I never thought that 2015 would be the year that I don't have my parents with me. Uh, so I, I try not to take anything for granted anymore. I, not that I took anything for granted before, but even more so now. You know, it's the simple things. You know, I, I never thought that uh, my parents would not be here with me today. So um, it's bittersweet. Uh, I, you know, we have no control over the plans that God has. Uh, all we can do is trust him and stay faithful and uh, believe that one day he will reveal himself, right? Okay. So I just want to share briefly on the legacy of leadership. This is what I have learned. This is why I'm able to, to stand here with you guys today. I promise I won't be two hours. Uh, I'm going to be uh, much shorter than that. Um, I am the short-winded of the Monroes. Uh, my sister is much more, uh, much like my father. I am kind of similar to my mother, soft-spoken, don't say too much. But when we speak, we do speak with some power and, you know, we... We, but as a family, we love everyone. You know, that's the one thing that uh, our parents taught us, and we, we, we definitely carry on that characteristic. Um, here's my parents. Uh, each picture I see with them now reminds me of all the good times that we spent. <clears throat> I will try not to get emotional tonight. I have done a good job so far of doing that. But as of, re as of recent, it's been a bit, it's been a bit hard because, you know, it's, it's still fresh. It's still take some getting used to, um, but I think I'll be able to, to do that. So, you know, as those are my parents and my sister, Charissa, who is currently uh, in Nassau, Bahamas. I will be going back to see her tomorrow. I wish I could have stayed uh, through tomorrow with you guys, um, but unfortunately there's a, a meeting that will be going on back home that I must attend. Um, but I'll do my best tonight to at least try to inspire uh, someone here tonight. Um, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> so I want to speak on uh, something that my dad did for me. Uh, he mentored me. He mentored me from I was a kid to, to an adult man. Um, he has taught me everything that I know, and I believe he's still teaching me. He teaches me now. He teaches me now through through individuals that are, that are around me who we also taught. So being able to hear them and what they say, sometimes for me it's, it's, it's refreshing because it's like he's speaking to me still, you know? And I, I appreciate um, the, the, the opportunities, opportunities that I get to speak to those individuals because it allows me to still hear him, um, to still hear him speak. So let, let's define leadership. It took my dad 30 years to kind of coin this unique definition of, of leadership. And I'll ask if everyone could just look at the screen and read it. Ready? The capacity to influence others through inspiration generated by passion, motivated by a vision, brought by a conviction, produced by a purpose. So that's what leadership entails. He, my, my dad was, all of this in one human being. And this is what he sees in every individual that he comes in, into contact with. There's a leader in each one of us. And he believed that, I believe that. And uh, that's something that uh, I truly want to carry on. 
and uh, make a part of his, 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 his legacy. Uh, the greatest act of leadership is mentoring. And for me, mentoring is reproducing yourself, being able to, to, to show someone else what it is to be the individual they were born to be. They can't be you, but they can be, they can be a version of you that is unique to them. You know, my, my dad, I, I, I can never, I can't fill his shoes. It's, it's far too big for me to ever fill. So that, that's not even a thought that crosses my mind. But, I, but what I will do is I will do the best that I can to be the Miles Monroe that I can be, you know? So it, it's all about reproducing yourself. And I think uh, my dad and my mom did a, did a very good job of reproducing themselves. I, I hear stories uh, every day uh, from persons that I come into contact with. Um, you know, they, there's, a, there's a, a testimony that they tell me of something that my dad did or my mom did uh, that inspired them or that changed their lives, um, you know, financially or emotionally or helped them with their marriage or helped them with their kids. There's so, so much things that you can do that you may think uh, wouldn't mean something to someone but it really does. It, it could be the smallest things that, that is able to change someone's life. So reproducing yourself for me is a part of mentoring and mentoring for me is a very important part of leadership, especially, especially when we're talking about succession. Um, leadership success is measured by the success of the successor. So I feel like my dad's success is gonna be measured by my success, and I take I take that to heart. I, I take this 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 mandate and this baton that he has passed on to me. Uh, it, it's it's a goal of mine now to to carry on this vision and to make sure that everything that he has worked for, everything that he has has instilled in me, I now bring out and I I reproduce myself in in someone else. Uh, that's that's the goal. Uh, for the next 30 years, God's willing. <laughs> um, mentoring and succession. The definition of succession, let's find succession. The effect to transfer, the effective transfer, conveyance, and transition of a leader's vision, passion, purpose, intent, dreams, character, standards, values, morals, and qualities to succeeding generation, generations of leaders. So that's, that's what mentoring, that's what succession it all entails. It's, it's literally reproducing yourself. It's, it's bringing everything that you have learned, everything that you have coined, every principle that you have mastered, and reproducing it into, into another individual, whether they're old, young, uh, older than young, <laughs> however you want to term it. Um, it's, re it's really reproducing yourself. Uh, the, the, the leadership that my dad has shown me and the effects of, of, his, of his ministry or, you know, around the world, is, it's, it's mind blowing to know that you know, a man from an island that is seven by 21 miles long has had the impact that he has had on a global scale. Uh, and it's, it, it's a testament to what God is able to do. Because, you know, my dad couldn't do it by himself. You know, he was dedicated to the mandate that God gave him. Um, and he was faithful to, to that vision. And I feel that's why he was able to, to impact the people and, and the, the nations that he was able to impact. The identity, identify it now. There are, there are things that my dad has done uh, through the years um, as a leader <clears throat> to, to, to reproduce himself, to, to determine how he wants to reproduce himself and who he wants to reproduce himself in. Uh, you know, it, it, we, we turn them mentees. You know, you have an individual who someone wants to follow or wants to serve under, and that individual mentors them to better themselves as an individual. Um, but in, 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 in mentoring someone, you, you cannot mentor someone, and this is something my dad taught me last year. Well, well, something that I grasped last year. 
I heard it a lot, but it made sense. It started to make sense to me last year. You cannot mentor someone that doesn't want to be mentored. Mentorship isn't something that you can force on someone because if it's forced and, and the person doesn't want to be mentored, then it's not going to be effective because it, it has, mentorship entails someone wanting something from you so bad that they are constantly asking you and seeking answers to, to questions that they can't answer, but you're able to, but they have to ask you those questions. You just can't give them the answers because you don't really know what the questions are that they have. So I, every, every opportunity that I had, I sat with my dad and any, any, anything that I went through in life, whether it be personal, professional, educational, you know, whatever it was, I sat with him um, uh, and, and we, we talked and he, he made it clear for me to make certain decisions. And there were times that I didn't ask his advice and, you know, and I decided to make decisions on my own and I realized that that was a detriment to my success because God, has, God places individuals in our lives as advisors to, to help us. And we may think that they are trying to hinder us or stop us from accomplishing what we want to accomplish. But, you know, they have really gone through what we are going through, you know, already. So there's no need for us to make the mistakes that they made. And that's, that's all a mentor, you know, tries to do. Uh, my dad never forced any decision on me, ever, ever. He's never said, I want you to do this or I want you to do that. It's been something, he, he would recommend something and leave me with the choice to make the decision. Now, when I made the wrong decision, you know, he would sit me down and we would have a, a much more stern conversation. <laughs> uh, but he, he still allowed me to make that decision. And, and that's what mentors do. Mentors aren't overbearing on the mentees. You have to allow a mentee um, first to want to learn. Um, they have to align with the vision uh, that you have, and they have to be sold out for that vision. Um, if they don't believe in your way forward, then they're not going to be along for the ride for, for too long, because at some point they're going to get distracted and they're going to get detoured, and they're, they're not going to end up being a, a, a great example of what you were trying to, to create in them. So these are things that my dad did for me that I recognize, and it's, it's why I'm able to stand here today. Um, I'm not nervous at all, um, and it's amazing, when I was a kid, uh, maybe at age 13, well, less than 13, let's say 10, uh, my dad, <coughs> my sister and I traveled with my parents a lot. Um, every opportunity that we got, usually in the summertime, because we were in high school, most of the, um, in, in school most of the time, uh, we would travel, you know, to places like this, and we would sit on the front row somewhere, and my dad would come up and he would greet the, uh, the congregation or the audience, and he would introduce his family. Uh, well, usually my mother would come up with him. So it would be him and her standing on the stage, my sister and I sitting somewhere in the audience. And he would introduce us. He would tell us to stand. And nine times out of 10, he would tell us to come up on stage and say something. That is something that I hated. I, I did not like that. I really didn't. It was I, I, because I was so nervous and I never wanted to be, you know, in, in the spotlight or on the stage. I was much more comfortable just, you know, being his son sitting in, in the congregation with everybody else. But that was something that he, I realize now, was teaching me. He was preparing me uh, to be comfortable, uh, you know, making public speeches, basically. And... You know, I could remember, you know, being 15 and 16 and, you know, going, traveling with them. And before we go uh, into the uh, arena that we would, he, he would be ministering, you know, I, I would pull him aside. I'd be like, okay, tonight uh, you can just tell me to stand up. I'll wave and I'll sit back down. <laughs> you don't have to call me up on stage to say anything, okay? And, you know, he would shake his head and he'd be like, okay, all right. He would come up on stage and do the same thing. I like to introduce my kids, I like them to come up. And so after a while, you get so accustomed to it that it's like second nature to you. And that's what a, that, that's what a mentor does. He puts, he, he pushes you. He, he, he takes you out of your comfort zone because he sees something in you that you might not see at the time. 
And that's usually, that's usually the, the inspiration for us uh, to want to seek a mentor. Because there are questions that we have, there are doubts that we have in ourselves. In ourselves. There was a lot of doubt that I have in myself. And I still have doubts, you know, but I, I, trust, I trust the process of mentorship. And I trust that everything that I need to know, I have learned. And at some point, it is going to be pulled out of me by some situation that I'm in, and I'm going to remember something my dad said or something my dad taught me or something that I've seen him do. And it encourages me to, 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 to be an encouragement to everyone. Um, so in, in mentoring, my dad, he, he selects mentees, which, you know, obviously he selected me. Uh, and then you pick a starting point for mentoring. Now, for me, he started at the age of eight with me. Not, not necessarily mentoring me, but preparing me for mentorship. My starting point where I, you know, decided to seek my dad's mentorship was about five years ago. I had just graduated uh, with my master's degree, and I was looking for a job um, in the U.S., uh, that was a, a big goal of mine. I did not want to, I was not ready to go back home to the Bahamas. Um, I really wanted to stay in the U.S. and work. And God would have it that that would be the time uh, that the market kind of took a downturn and, you know, there weren't a lot of jobs being offered. Uh, so I remember I, I, was, um, jobs, I was on my job search for almost a year. And my dad gave me a call one day. Uh, just a random call, just, you know, saying, hey, son, what's up? How you doing? Just checking on you. And he said, um, I was thinking, you know, you haven't found a job yet. Uh, what do you think about coming home uh, and working with me? Not necessarily in the church, but working, you know, with the family business. Uh, and honestly, it took, it took me three seconds to make that decision because it just made sense. And it, it wasn't, and it wasn't anything that I thought about before. Like I, I had, I hadn't thought about it prior to him asking me. But once he said it, it was like, yes, this, it, it just felt like it registered with me. Yes, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So that's when I decided to be a mentee of my dad. Um, you know, and I, I think, I think at the time I was 26, 25, 26 years old, and. Uh, that's when I decided to be, you know, mentored by him. And I think these, these last five years has been, I've learned so much, you know, these from the, in these last five years. I've seen him in every situation possible. And his reaction to some of the things that he experiences amazes me. He, I, there is no one like Miles Monroe on this earth. I, I promise you. He is, you know, I don't want, I don't want to, and I'll just go ahead and say, he's the closest individual to Jesus Christ that I know. <laughs> and that's, that's the honest truth. I, I, I you know, I, I, I meet a lot of people in, with, with influence, with power. And, you know, my dad is really the guy that you see. He is that guy in front of you, behind you, on the side of you. Anywhere that he goes, he is himself. And he is, he doesn't. He changes for no one because he knows who he is as an individual, you know, and those are, these are the things that he, that he taught me. So you, you pick a starting point and the keys to mentoring, the key, the, the things that my dad allowed me to do was he gave me access. He gave me access to resources. He gave me access to finance. He gave me access to his time. He gave me access to him as an individual. As a mentor, you can't, you can't just allow your mentees or someone you're mentoring or, or counseling to, to just see you in the public eye. They, they need to see the way you are, or you react in the dark because it allows them in turn to, do, to be able to realize or to understand what they need to be doing when they're not in the front of everybody. You know, you, you, it's important for a leader to be the exact same person they say they are behind everyone's eyes. Because I could stand there and tell you that I am, you know, uh, I am one type of person. I, uh, I could stand there and tell you I am black, right? And I can go in the back room and wash my face, 
and I turn white because I, I'm wearing makeup or I'm wearing some disguise or whatever. You know, so you have to be the same person that you are in the front of people behind closed doors. And that's, that's one thing that my dad always did. Another thing is you have to give your mentees, you have to give, uh, sorry, let me make it personal. My dad gave me freedom. I had freedom of choice. Like I said, he didn't force me to make any decisions. He didn't force, sorry, any decisions on me. He, he allowed me to make my own decisions, make my own mistakes. He allowed me to make, um, make my own success. You know, he, he trusted me enough. When I, when I moved home uh, in 2009, he trusted me en enough to just give me access to him. Every, every resource, every, every person that he knew, he, he gave me access. And that taught me, that gave me the confidence and that gave me the will to not want to fail, not want to disappoint him, you know, and subconsciously, it, th that's what it does to someone that you're mentoring. If, if they feel that you aren't giving them access, then they're going to think, well, I'm not good enough. Or maybe, I'm, you know, you, there's something that you see in me that you're not happy about and you're not, you know, it, it's, it's something, he, he believed in people so much that regardless if you made a mistake, he still believed in what he saw in you and he didn't believe in the mistake. And that's, that's, some, that's hard. That's something that I'm still learning to do. You know, um, he, I, he perfected it. You know, he had, uh, he was 60, so I'm sure he had a lot of time on this earth. And he met a lot of people on this earth who, you know, rubbed him the wrong way, I'm sure. But he still loved the God in them. You know, and, and that's, that's something that is difficult, difficult to do. Um, and it's something that I pray that I am able to do it at some point. <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm only human. <laughs> uh, but he, he definitely did that. And, you know, also, obviously, if, you know, it's, 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 corre it's correction, you know, discipline. If he has to discipline me or correct me, he does it. And he does it with love. Um, and he does it as a, f he, he, he did, for me, he, did, he never did it as a father. He always did it as a mentor and as someone that, was always trying to pull out of me what he saw. Um, I didn't know it was there. I, I really didn't. Like I'm, I'm here speaking to you now, and in my head, I'm just like, "Wow, I can't believe how comfortable I am on the stage." Like you, uh, you, you guys don't understand. Like I'm not, I'm not shaking. I'm not nervous at all. You know, it's, it's because he, it, I was being prepared this entire time. You know, and I believe that now. That's something that. Um, you know, I'm, I may not preach like him, but I do think that some public speaking is involved with whatever I'm supposed to do. And I thank him. I thank him for preparing me for that. Um. <clears throat> and then another thing that he did is he trusted me. He trusted me as a person and he trusted the process of everything that he has instilled in me as an individual to carry on and to, uh, to make the mistakes, to learn from my mistakes, to ask his advice whenever I, I, I needed it, to be patient. Um, my dad was the most patient man I have ever met. He, I need his patience. I, I need half of his patience to, 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 to live the rest of my life. And you know, and patience is, is it's real because as, as a leader, you can't make irrational decisions. You just can't make emotional decisions. You know, your decision making has to be in the space of a process because as a leader, the decision that you make affects so many. And my dad knew this. So he allowed me to learn that principle and, and he allowed me to make my mistakes. And in making my mistakes, you know, he taught me valuable lessons and, you know, things that I, I cherish now and will cherish for the rest of my life. And hopefully I'll be able to transfer to my kids. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to mentor someone and do the same for them. Reproduce myself in them. Reproduce what he has reprodu what it, what I, reproduce what he has produced in me into someone else. Um, so, you know, these, these are uh, things that I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, this has been the toughest time of my life. You know, I've never, I, don't, I, don't, I can't even describe to you what a day is for me. You know, because um, it's still all so surreal. Uh, Aside from him being, you know, Miles, you know, he was my father. He, you know, him and my mother 
are all I knew. I lived for them. I worked with them uh, for years. You know, we traveled the world together. We did everything together as a family. And, you know, them not being here, is, it is difficult. It is something that I will definitely have to get used to, and it's not going to happen in 2015. Not at all. But I am encouraged by uh, the prayers and the the... the the inspiration that folks give me, you know, because he was an inspiration to them. Uh, you know, I, the harvest, that the seed that he has sown in on this earth while he was here, while, my, while they both were here, the seed that they sown on this earth is going to reap a great harvest to everyone that was in contact with them. And I believe that, and I feel like now it is our turn as mentees, as 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 spiritual sons and daughters, to carry on this, this, this legacy, you know, to carry on this mandate now of transforming followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. So I want to thank you guys for giving me your air. I trust that I inspired or encouraged someone tonight. Um, and I just want to thank you for, for your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. So, Pastor Phil, once again, thank you for allowing me to uh, address uh, this conference and your, your stage. I, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's, I, I know it's not a mistake that we, we met last year for the first time after 23 years. That is crazy. My dad came here for the first time when I was eight, and I came here for the first time when I was 30. How crazy is that, right? It's all for his purpose, so um, I'm encouraged, and, and thank you. Stay up here a moment. You know, it is, it, uh, you know, we, we say it's ironic, but it's just like God, isn't it? It's just like God's. God's fingerprints all over this because of last year. I had to think about you mentioning the fact that last year, this time, your father was a speaker as he was every year, and you were here for the first time. And this year, one year later, you are the general session guest preacher, speaker. <laughs> I see so much of myself in this young man because I also, for so many years, I pursued business administration and telecommunications. I was telling Miles this before the service. I went to Oral Roberts University. But I took as I went there because it was a liberal arts Christian school. I took as little religion as I had to to graduate. I knew only one thing for sure. I was never going to be a preacher. That's the only thing I knew for sure. But uh, God knew exactly what he was doing to train me in business and television, knowing that I'd be producing television, I'd be on television, and I'd be running, you know, this ministry and uh, the other corporations that we have, uh, just like you've been trained for. But I told Miles, all it took was one visitation from God, you know, to change my desires about the ministry. I want us, before we're seated, let's all stand. I'm going to ask my father to come up here because my mentor and my father is still alive on this earth. And uh, I want to invite us all to join hands with somebody and let's say amen to this word, maybe the first message that Miles Jr. has brought in this kind of a setting, you know, where his dad has, has ministered for 23 years. And I think it's a launching pad. I think we were sitting here in the, the last 40 minutes watching this young man transform even before our eyes. As God has a plan for all of us, it's always bigger than we are. And we never feel capable. We never feel qualified. And that's part of the qualification is to not feel qualified. My father, at this age, you know, 60 years into his ministry, still confesses publicly that he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> but God can use that kind of a yielded vessel. Dad, what's on your heart?
God chooses the weak things of the world to confound the wise and know the foolish things. It says, I want to say this about my brother. You start it. You're at, you have a beginning, and you're going to get so much better. My, my word to you is just keep doing it. If you don't know what to say, get up there and just look at the people and thank God you're standing in front of people. You're going to get better at it, and you're going to have also the mind of your father. The Lord showed to me that very clear to me sitting there that you're going to be delivering sometime from this very place some of the same some of the same truths and revelations that God gave to your father. It's already seated in you. Your father prayed for you, and your mother prayed for you, and it's seated in you. It's going to come out of you, but don't rush it. No rush. You've got the rest of your life to enjoy it, but when it comes, you're going to know it's the Lord, but you're going to be changing a whole lot. One of the things about a Christian is we're so unboring to be around because we're always changing for the better. You knew that, didn't you? That's why your neighbors would like to be like you because you're so changing all the time. That's because we're born again believers in Jesus Christ and God has a creative ability in each one of us. While you have a desire, all that you have a desire to be is going to come to pass. If you can think it, it's going to happen. So just keep thinking when you pray. And when the thought comes to your mind, oh my, I wish I could be, it's going to happen. It'll even get better than that. That's the way God does things. But we are so happy and proud of you, my brother, that you would be faithful and willing to stand in front of these people in your, what you feel, unablement, your inability. But God, God thrives on inabilities and makes us able. Makes us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But anyway, thank you very much. I'd like you to pray a, a commissioning prayer, an ordination prayer, as you've done for so many. Uh, because this place is a launching pad. You know, I, I'll never forget when Tommy Barnett, who we all know and love, another one of my mentors, was here preaching as I brought him back here every year. And I learned so much from him about pastoring and about reaching the local community for Christ. But I'll never forget when he opened his message, you know, like he always did with a few written words and so stately and perfectly. And he wasn't into his message but a few minutes. And then all of a sudden he dropped to, he stopped. He dropped to his knees and started crying and weeping like a baby right here at this spot, right here. And we, we, we were all shocked, you know. We, we didn't know what to expect because we thought, you know, maybe he was about to confess something we didn't want to hear, <laughs> you know. Uh, it was back in those years. And uh, that guy wiped his face. He got back up and he said, God just spoke to me and confirmed to me in this place that I'm to build a dream center in Los Angeles, California, in Los Angeles. And that night, we took the first offering for that vision right here in this place. And over the years, you know, my dad, we we're just reminiscing with, uh, with uh, Benny Hinn a couple weeks ago that my dad laid hands on and commissioned and ordained Benny Hinn and all his brothers before anybody ever heard that name here in the United States and then prophesied over him that he'd be speaking before tens of thousands of people and and in those times I mean Benny and Suzanne they took their honeymoon at our Minnesota Christian retreat before anybody knew their names and had come here many many times us just hanging out but God calls and raises up great visions in this place it's holy ground so this isn't by accident and you being here a year ago is not by accident. God's raising up another great leader as the Lord, you know, as, as, as he stays and allows us to continue preaching the gospel of the kingdom, he's raising up another great leader. Amen, amen, amen. Let me have your right hand. Father, I thank you for my brother, Miles. Lord, here he is, a definite a uh, reproduction of his father, a great man of God. And I thank you, Father, that we tonight agree that that anointing will continue as he believes and will be revealed to multitudes and m perhaps millions around the world through both television and through literature that he writes as well as the words that he speaks. I thank you, Father, that we have the privilege to be with this young man, that, Lord, your hand is upon him and your purpose and plan will be fully revealed through him. And, Lord, he shall blossom like a rose. He shall blossom like a flower. The beauty of the Lord shall be heard, shall be heard and be seen and realized through this young man to the glory of God and for the glory of your kingdom. 
Bless him, and I pray for his precious sister as well, that you bless them together. You honor them, honor their faith and their courage and determination to be in the center of your will, fulfilling your plan as we claim, Lord, your will to be done, your kingdom to be glorified through this vessel to the glory of your kingdom forever and forever. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. God bless you.